Hey, Dan. What's up, Alex? All right. Another week. Another game night. You got it. I'm going to go first. Oh. And I'm ready to go. Go for it. Can I? See what you got this week. All right. We've been playing a lot of games that are very competitive, and I've been winning a lot. So um, I think it's time to take it easy on you all and bring in a collaborative game. change of pace. Paleo. Oh, okay. I love Paleo. Paleo is such a fun little cooperative game by Z-Man Games. Cool. So I think one of the other weeks I was doing Pandemic, talking about my like stowaway whiskey, mm-hmm. right? So this time it's Paleo. It's the beginning of time whiskey. Okay. Oh, I let it out of the bag too early. What do you <laughs> pair with this, Dan? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so this game is great um, because everybody essentially is just a... Uh, a member of the Stone Age, right? You have a band. You start with a couple uh, characters that, you know, you turn over. Everybody does. And they give you special abilities. You have certain health. This is your um, tribe of cavemen. Yeah, right? Oh. And you can build your tribe as you go along. And the whole the whole thing you're trying to do is you're trying to make this, get five pieces of the mammoth wall art, right? So okay. that your story will be remembered before you have five skulls. And skulls can come through many different things, losing at what you're trying to do, your task. Um, You know, it can come from one of your people dying. But it's all about trying to get these little pieces to fit together and to put them on the board. It's so cool. And I absolutely love this. There's tons of replayability because there's different, like, scenarios that you can do. And you can mix and match them. So I will say, uh, because it's happened to me, this is a big pain to put together so you have to make sure that the cards are separated because if you don't put it together the correct way it is a mess so true tell you a true story um my son and my grandmother had fun with this game and they took out cards and just pretended that they knew what they were doing with the game and so when i opened it back up for one of our other game nights I looked at the cards and was like, oh my gosh, this is going to take me 35 minutes to tear it apart, <laughs> right? To get ready to just play. So yeah. it definitely is one of those games you have to put it away correctly. Kind of a you have storage to set it up. for it. Yeah. yeah, you got to know what you're doing when you start playing. But when you play, it's fun to roll through the scenarios. Yeah, I played this. I've only played this game one time, and I had an absolute blast with it. I loved it. I cannot wait to play it again. I think this is a great choice. Excellent. Also, you can build tools in the game, um, so you can be crafting. I'll say that it tells a story. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what's so much fun about a cooperative game, when it tells a great story, and this one is uh, amazing, because things make sense you know it's like you can start building this tool but once you have a stick then you and you have a stone then you can put the stone on the stick and then you know (laughs) you have a mace and then you can use that and or you can build a trap but your trap has to have it costs meat to use to do the trap like things just make sense yeah um and uh obviously you have to feed your people because there's a day phase Mm -hmm. right and that's where you play your cards you do your tasks and you can help each other out potentially with tasks bigger tasks so if somebody has like kill this wolf it could take two or three of you to do that sure so it doesn't have to be one man alone makes sense um and some of the cards on the back they'll have like an indication it'll be like red with thorns and you'll be like ooh something bad is coming. But then sometimes... <laughs> Don't draw that card. Yeah, sometimes... Or you'll know, and you'll mm-hmm. say, like, hey, I'm taking the bad card. Does anybody, can, you mm-hmm. know, take a good card? Yep. You can also dream. That's what that is. I was thinking day phase, night phase. I couldn't remember what that was for. Oh, you can also dream, which is fun. Okay. So you can have the deep thoughts, and that, you know adds more cards to your deck and I don't know there's just so much I'm I'm giddy about this game I think it's so much fun and it is harder to get to the table because it's a co-op co-op mm-hmm. um, but it's so much fun I yeah we, we don't we don't do a lot of co-ops with our group um, I love them but we have a lot of competitive guys not competitive in like I have to win but we do a lot of uh, you know it, it, it's fun to play your best play hard and talk a lot of smack in the process yeah yeah, and, and like I said, some cards give hints. You can add more guys to your party, but that's more mouths to feed at the night phase. True. Because if you run out of cards, then it's time to go sleep, right? Gotcha. And so some people in your party can still be out trying to hunt and do tasks, and you're like, I'm pooped. I had a long <laughs> I'm day. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And you have to have food enough to feed everybody, and uh, obviously there are certain tasks. So there's a lot to it. There's a lot to unpack and explore, and that's the fun. There's a lot of replayability. 
and I will tell you that I've played the hardest setting on this three times with knowledgeable, brilliant people, not me, but others, <laughs> and we have never been able to beat it. Okay. So lots to work on. All right. And everybody has their own idea, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. There are some of those co-op games where you sit down and there's one person telling everybody what to do. Oh, yeah, the quarterback. Yeah. This game is not so much about that because you make your own decisions. And so if somebody tells you something, you're like, well, no. My, yeah, I'm taking that card anyway. My cave people say no. <laughs> I'm going to get the lone wolf myself. So, anyways, a lot of fun. That's cool. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. I can't wait to play this one again. Paleo is so much fun. Z-Man Games. So, what do you pair with this? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't beer like the oldest... I one guess of river water, like, you know, yeah. I don't know. I was thinking about a river or something. So I, I do have to tell you that one of Dan's favorite distilleries is Old Foe. And, and I didn't bring an Old Foe, I'm sorry, ah. from, you know. But I recently was in Louisville. Okay. And at your recommendation, mm -hmm. you made this special suggestion that I go to a certain place. And I'm not going to say it over here because I don't want to blow the place up. Oh, but, okay, good, good. But we have to have some secrets. It's a, it's a well-kept secret, apparently. You told me about it, and I went, and I have to say, I had one of the best mornings ever. I got there. It opened early in the morning, mm -hmm. and my wife was at a conference, and she was nice enough to bring me along. Uh, but I'll say I went straight to this place, checked it out, and they had a breakfast club. And they were drinking some of these amazing whiskeys, and they invited me in, these strangers Whiskey from Louisville. Whiskey for breakfast. <laughs> Whiskey bre barley breakfast, can right? We, yeah, can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, listen, I was on vacation. But, True. But it's a thing that this group of guys, and again, not trying to you know out them mm -hmm. or anything like that, but they were bringing bottles that were so crazy, I tasted stuff I would never taste in my wildest dreams. And they invited cool. me in, That's and it cool. was such a fun time. Um, so you, you crashed their... Bourbon breakfast. A hundred percent. That's exactly <laughs> yeah, what happens. Just making sure. That's just exactly sure. what happens. Anyways, so as a thank you, because I probably had tastings of some bottles that were in the thousands and thousands like of dream dollars. Bottles. Old Saint Nick this ah. and old Pappy that and some bottles cool. that are just unbelievable. And they wouldn't let me pay a cent, right? So as a <laughs> thank crazy. you, I brought you back a bottle. So oh. it's a bottle that has story. So don't get too excited. Okay. Found from his grandpappy's boot. It's Green oh. River. Green River and what does that say? Weeded bourbon. Weeded bourbon. I had heard just this came out, but I you. have not seen it anywhere. You got it. So it came out just in 2023 this year. So yep. Green River was the 10th oldest distillery in America, right? Yep. You got it. So they came out um, 18 something, 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 something. Anyways, mm -hmm. grew up 1901. We're like huge they put out a campaign i think they were the world's most advertised okay whiskey in the world interesting because they said that they were the whiskey without a hangover so everyone's like oh, oh yeah. i want that can't so make i guess those claims anymore I you guess. can't make medical claims anymore no not since prohibition right so anyways <laughs> 1933 they changed that slogan interesting anyway but um it also is known as the most expensive whiskey ever produced. You want to know really? why? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I thought I was asking, do you know why? I, I, I really thought why. he was going like to know why. go along with my story, but I'll, I got <laughs> shut down pretty hard. Just take your gift and run. No. No. Anyways, um, in 1917, I think, mm -hmm. they traded 20 barrels out to Colorado to purchase a gold mine. Oh, okay. Okay. Gold rush, all this craziness. You know, gold rush was a little earlier, but anyways. Okay. Gold mine hadn't really been doing a lot. They struck gold. Uh, and so they say that it is the most expensive bottle of whiskey ever purchased. The most expensive whiskey ever because of how much gold was produced, how rich the riches were, right? <laughs> that's so, cool. That's a cool story. But in, interestingly, in 1918, just a year later, mm -hmm. a mysterious fire burned down their entire property. All oh, of man. their stores, 40,000 barrels, 28 acres of property. What a bummer. So... Needless to say, they've been open, sold, bought, mothballed, all that mm -hmm. closed. They reopened 1990-something, four maybe, mm -hmm. and, or 1993, I think. Long story short, just did a reconstruction in 2014. Mm -hmm. 
This is the very first weeded bourbon. Came out That's this year. Cool. And it's gifted to you, good sir. Oh, that's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, dude. Thank you for this the tip, amazing. my friend. This so is very cool. Let's let's uh let's open it up and have a little yeah, sip, we shall we? Sample this guy. Ooh. So a couple things that I saw right away about this bottle. One of them, um, I believe that they've been working with Bardstown, one of our one of the brands that we we quite enjoy. Um so that's kind of cool. The other thing I noticed is it's a sour mash. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we've ever talked about that on here, but uh, one of the things with the sour mash, so when they when they ferment the tanks and they make their mash, if if they do it, if it's the first time, it's a sweet. It's called a sweet mash. A sour mash is where you leave some of the distillate um, in there, and then you run another batch, and so it's got some of the properties of the first go around. In there as well. Wow. Oh, yeah. That just smells like silky smooth. I know. It smells so good. It's got a lot of... Um, it reminds me a lot of Makers on the Nose, which is, okay. has a lot of wheat content in it, too. But, yeah, that's where we go. A lot of caramel. Yeah, you just want to chew that around. Mmm. Mmm. That is excellent. Owensboro, Kentucky. You got it. Here you go. Thank Ooh. you, dude. That's yeah. very unexpected, very kind. Oh, I'm excited about it for you. This might not last through game night. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. So Green River, guys, if you guys want to check that out, I think they've got... It's not a crazy price, too. I mean, I know that it, I sold it like it is, uh, you know, an exceptional, but it, it is exceptionally reasonably priced. That's cool. So, um, you know, I would definitely go out and find a bottle. I feel like if you're in Louisville, you can get it for like, you know, 40 bucks. Oh, okay. Outside of Louisville, it might be very hard to get it because I don't think that they have much of a market yet. Yeah, I was going to say Green River because they, they came out with their bourbon a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. Um and I remember that was like thirty bucks a bottle, mm -hmm. but we we couldn't get it here in Florida. So um, when we when my wife and I were in Kentucky, uh, that's where I got to try it. And I think they did a rye as well. I mm -hmm. I've heard of this weeded. I've never yes. seen it. This is so cool. Yeah, it just came out this year. So get a bottle if you can. It is well worth it. So the Green River and the Paleo. Green River Paleo. All right, and awesome. that's all we have to do for tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. And as we always say, Dan. No, oh wait, what? <laughs> no, no, no. I, oh. I brought something too. Oh, I mean, it's, it's Paleo seems good. Okay, it's not going to take up all game night. Hmm. And I got to get higher up on our every game pairing ever list. Wow. So I'm I'm going to make a valiant effort tonight. This thing is so good. I know. I know. It's so tasty. Mm. All right. So what did you bring? So, while we're talking Kentucky, oh. what is Kentucky known for <laughs> but horse racing, That's, right? This is going to pair well with that, too. It is. It is. It really is. <laughs> so, I brought Ready, Set, Bet by somebody that we talked about last week, Jean Declare. Jean Declare. So, if you guys have not played Ready, Set, Bet yet, it is a rollicking good time. I mean, it's just... You guys are going to be horse racing and betting on the horse racing. So, well, let me show you this guy. This is probably, this is one of the most lackluster parts of the game. And honestly, we don't typically use this when we play. We, we use an app. Um, but this is what the game board looks like if you want to do it the analog way. You're really selling this game well. <laughs> I know. So you got these little horses. Uh, they're, they've got numbers on them. They've got tracks on them. And these horses are going to go where they go. And off onto the starting turn. It's many Penny coming around the side. Exactly. And not slowly. So that's what you do. Is you're going to have dice. You're going to roll these dice. And yes, these horses are going to move. So as these horse horses are moving, uh, the players are going to be placing some crazy bets on this wild Vegas style board. Whoa. So this board has all kinds of stuff. We're betting on who's going to place, who's going to show, who's going to win. Uh, there's prop bets. There's crazy bets all over this thing. And what we're going to do is we, we get the, <laughs> we get the app running and, uh, the, the app is going in real time. It's not waiting for us. It's going, hey, look, this horse moves. And everybody's going to be placing these chips out and placing their bets everywhere. And if you hit on these things, you're going to get multipliers. And it's the first one to get there. It's not like it goes around in turn order, right? No, no, no. It's, it's first live. to place. It's real action. So, whew, 
Nobody sits down for this game. You are standing up and you are trying to race and put these bets in, get them under people, get these prop bets before other people do. And you're gonna play this over a few rounds. I think it's five rounds. Um, and maybe it's three rounds, I can't remember. We'll play it. It'll be fun. <laughs> we'll make uh, it five. But between 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 the rounds, you're gonna get these VIP cards, and these VIP cards are gonna have like game breaking yes. abilities that you're going to be able to have. So maybe when a certain number is rolled, you're gonna get extra money. There's this red line here on the board. Typically, once a horse gets past there, you can't place any more bets. And then we're just kind of ready, waiting to see what happens. But there's some ability that lets you place bets after you get past that line. So it's just really really cool stuff. Really loud, really boisterous. Um, everybody gets talking smack. Everybody's cheering for the dice. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. And it's just... <laughs> it's its a ton of fun. It, it's just an absolute blast. Total winner here with Ready, Set, Bet. I like it. And and it's also fun because sometimes um, it, it goes to high player count, if I'm it not does. mistaken. It does. I think it'll go up to eight. Yeah. And and if you have, like, a group together, I mean, like, in my mind, you know, this is kind of a great runner-up to any horse racing event. If you held, like, the Belmont at your place or yep. Kentucky Derby Party. I mean, this game is the top game to play. Oh, yeah. I mean, even beyond game night. But I feel like sometimes there's a benefit from having somebody run it. To there be is. the guy in the suit, who's doing the voice, who's, you know, yep. really... If, if you have that right person, like, they can totally eat it up. Um, Tom Vassell, he's run this at the retreat. We've been there. Yes. And he he's told us that it's as much fun to run as it is to play sometimes. But, you know, uh, I've never actually played with him because every time I tried to, he's like, oh, man, my voice is, like, done. I've run this thing, like, five times today already. So if you've got that person that wants to run it and can totally eat it up, like... It, it's a winner for them. Yeah. So. The ninth man. Or woman. I mean, this Green River would be wonderful to pair it with. Let's do it. But. Oh. I also brought a whiskey. What did you bring? So. Of course. It's the Kentucky Derby. Horse racing. I don't like mint juleps. Mint juleps would be good for this. Not for me. Don't like it. Mint is so overpowering. <laughs> but. <laughs> when I think horse racing, I think Kentucky. When I think Kentucky, I think. Derby. Hot browns. <laughs> uh, I think bourbon. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to go with Heritage Brand. I went with Knob Creek. Uh -oh. So uh, some of you guys might not have heard of Knob Creek, but you certainly know... Oh, no. <laughs> you did. You certainly know it's, uh, it's, it's brand. Uh, it's owned by Jim Beam. So I wanted to go with a Heritage Whiskey, something that when you see them, you think Kentucky. And I went with Knob Creek. Now... That bottle... So, this thing is interesting. This actually came from the Jim Beam Distillery. I actually um, bottled this myself. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I paid for the bottle. They ran the machine for me. I got to follow it down. It came in. I got to put the wax on this. this all this wax, this, this was me, man. Like, that's why I, it's so sloppy. That's why it looks like garbage. <laughs> this thing here, this, this is my fingerprint on this bottle. So if anybody wants to uh, frame me for something, I'm sure Alex will be saving that to... Uh... Can I save it? <laughs> no, no, no. All right, fine. Um, but, so, and part of, another part of the reason why I went Knob Creek, similar to you with Paleo, the creek in the name. I wanted to talk a little bit about limestone water, which is so important to bourbon. You may have heard it when you were in Louisville, them talk about it. So, uh, limestone, in Kentucky... They have a limestone shelf. Where I'm else do they have limestone shelves? A lot of places. <laughs> the three predominant places that have limestone shelves in the world are Scotland that has the largest. Okay. Ireland. Okay. And then Kentucky. Isn't it That's interesting? interesting? All the best whiskey places. You got it. So, um... I mean, one of the things that's, that's important about limestone is that it adds a lot of minerals to the water. One of the other things, it takes out iron and some of the other bad minerals that you don't want when you're, when you're making whiskey. So iron can give a very uh, like sulfuric taste and give whiskey a bad taste. So limestone is a natural, it naturally pulls that stuff out. One of the other cool things about limestone is it's packed with calcium. What does calcium do? It's good for the bones. So when you talk about Kentucky thoroughbreds, these horses are 1,200, 1,400 pounds, and they're running and running and running. You've got to have thick bones for that. 
Limestone water is part of what attributes and the bourbon. strength of the horses. And the bourbon <laughs> just makes us care about horse racing just a little bit more. <laughs> wow. So this 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 guy's got a little punch for you. I already had my acclimation sip with the Green River. Oh wow. That is that 120 is proof. <laughs> Woo! So nine years. It is. So Knob Creek is a really cool and affordable brand. So if you guys see Knob Creek out there anywhere, you'll find it everywhere. There's a nine year uh, that's about 30, 35 bucks. I mean, typically when you're, you're thinking, what should I pay for a whiskey? You're thinking like $10 a year. So it should be a $90 whiskey. It's 30 bucks. Wow. Awesome. That it's worth so every bit of 30 bucks. Awesome. Now this is a single barrel. Like I said, this came from the distillery itself. There's also a lot of uh, store pick bottles, so you guys will see some of those floating around. They're like 50 or 60 bucks. They're super affordable. There's a Knob wow. Creek 12-year, which is amazing. So if, oh, you're, if wow. Knob Creek's not on your radar, get it on your radar. It's oh, good. It is very good. And for, like you said, 120 that is not uh, not insane. I mean, there's so much sweetness to it. There's a lot going on there. There is. There is wow. a lot going on, and it's for 120 proof. This is crushable. I mean, but you can. Your barrel is totally different from any other barrel. Your flavor profile is different from ever any other one. I mean, it they is. talk about how there are 300 different smells and tastes, right? Yep. And so. Your mixture of that one barrel is it. It is. No it is. one online will be able to sample this. This is true, but I've had quite a few Knob Creek single barrels in my day. <laughs> They're all excellent, man. It's one of the best kept secrets in, in bourbon, and I don't mind telling that to you guys out there. Um, if you see one, buy it. It's, you're going to love it. You got way more Southern as you said that. I don't care. I'll tell you Let guys. Let me tell you about John DeClaire. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Ready, set, bet. No, that game is great. This pairing is exceptional. You outdid yourself. Yeah, it'd be good. This is tasty. Definitely. Oh, my goodness. And mm. if, you, if you're not a rye guy either, if you're not a rye guy or girl, um, Knob Creek also does a rye. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Next time. Next time. Maybe that'll be my single barrel. Good brand. Good brand. Get it on your radar. <laughs> All right. So let's let's place these on our ever-growing list here. So okay. Paleo and your Green River Package Sampler <coughs> New Edition. The Rebirth. The Weeted. The, the Weeted Phoenix of Kentucky, as I like to call it. <laughs> uh, where do you think that goes? Oh, man. <clears throat> I mean, I think that it's fun. Uh, the game has a lot of hidden depths that I still am, like, checking out. I mm -hmm. want to keep playing it. Um, I don't know. I'm going to let you take a first stab. I can see it in, like, three different places. I know. That's kind of where I am with it as well. Um, the the game-wise, I enjoy it, but, you know, I don't know if it hits, beats that, you know, and that's kind of where I was. So I, I was looking the same place, as Alex. So we're looking at like champions of Midgard, above or below. You know, the pairing with the Einstock. Uh, I like that. I know, I know. And then Carson City with the High Noon and Smoke Wagon, the Level Up episode. <laughs> it, oh. it it might surpass Carson City. Okay. I, I think I'm going to put it above there. Champions is... I think it goes between Champions and Carson City. I got you. That's, that's where I'd float it. Now, the tougher one. Ready, set, bet, and the Knob Creek single barrel pick. Yeah. By Dan. To me, this one's tough. I, I love... You traveled. You went places. <laughs> Obviously, I love Knob Creek, and I love Ready, Set, Bet. But... Um, Ready, Set, Bet almost has a party game feel to it to me. Yes. Um, which is, is good because you can pull it out in so many different places, but it's, I, I think it also draws it back a little bit from getting taken super seriously at game night. And you and I can't play it right now. No, like it's not a game you're going to pull out with your wife mm -mm. and play with her. Like you need the right crowd for it. And, to, to me, that slightly hurts it. On the plus side, since it's since it's a party like game, you can drink 120 proof whiskey with it, and nobody cares. 
<laughs> and it might make the game more fun sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. Especially when somebody, there's always somebody that just goes, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to put bets out. And then they win. And you're like, how did you do that? And you're like, well, I just thought I'd throw it out on this. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm kind of looking around the same area. I, I'm not sure I would put it above Carson City and the Smoke Wagon. I still think that's a better, more thematic, iconic pairing. Um, Star Wars Deck Builder and Leashian Space Dust. You, you make that call. I think I it, I I definitely think it beats the Star Wars and Space Dust. Okay. I, I love so that's the pick. I love the personal touch that you did. You went there. You brought this back. You're gonna lead. Ready, set, bet. I know you are tonight. <laughs> Take that app away. You get it out there and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need like a straw hat, like a corn cob pipe or something for that though. I think it's gonna be good. Okay, cool. So we're we're splitting. We're going either side of Carson City with this with these two, but amazing pairings. These are really good. Wow, some good whiskeys for game night. Definitely. Wow, these guys are gonna be so lucky. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the people might be Ubering home tonight. And Dan, that's no problem. Another amazing, another amazing episode. I appreciate Definitely. you coming over and bringing this. This is so fun. Thank you for the Green River. That was mm. really cool. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a fun, fun evening. All right, like so, we always say, Dan. So, game hard, drink responsibly. Cheers, guys.